Hey guys, it's Rick. Welcome to the HD Vibe channel. If you'd like to see more tips, tricks, rides, reviews, installs on my Harley Davidson Touring motorcycles, as well as information about motorcycles and the Motorcycle Community Lodge, I ask you please hit that subscribe button. And when you do subscribe, please leave a comment down below saying I subscribe so I can personally reach out and thank you for supporting the channel. Also, don't forget to hit that bell icon to select all so that you do get notified every time I do put out new content. So today what I want to show you is how to connect your wireless headset, which in my case I have a Harley Davidson branded 30K, um, and this will apply to really Senna or Harley Davidson branded headsets, uh, but how to connect those to your infotainment system. Unfortunately, you can't just do that right out of the gate. You actually have to add a module, and that module is called the WIM, or Wireless Headset Interface Module. And I'm gonna show you how to do that step by step save you some money on the installation process, and I'm gonna show you how to do it on the 2021 Road Glide. I've also put this in on, the, on my 2015 Street Glide Special. It's just slightly different. Um, the bracket's a little different, but it's all included in the package. And we'll get into it right after this. Guys, as I said, um, in order to connect your wireless headsets to the infotainment systems on your 2014 and newer um, touring bikes that have the infotainment system, you need this part here, which is the wireless headset interface module from Harley-Davidson. And I'll put the part number and a link to it on the Harley-Davidson uh, website, but it is part number 76 zero 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 seven six eight so if you have a 2018 and newer um, either street glide road glide um, ultra limited i believe as well um, you just need this um, if you have a 2017 and older essentially 2014 to 2017 uh, model with the infotainment system there is one additional harness that you do need to get um, and I'll put that in the description as well. I'm not sure the part number off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll put that in the description. So, guys, before we get started on taking the fairing off of the Road Glide Special, um, I just kind of want to show you what you do get in that box. So, obviously, you got um, detailed instructions here, which I'm actually going to go through step by step and show you how to install this, at least on a Road Glide. It's just slightly different on the Street Glide. Um, you obviously get the wireless headset interface module itself, um, which is this little gray module. Um, this is the bracket that will connect um, onto the infotainment system um, underneath the fairing and then also connects onto the WIM module itself. This is the bracket that you would use if you have a Street Glide Special. Um, and this will actually mount, if you have a Street Glide Special or Street Glide or Ultra, it mounts on the right side of the bike. Um, on the Road Glide, it actually mounts on the left side of the bike. And then you have this harness, um, and since mine's a 2018 and newer, I just need the harness that actually comes in the kit. Um, and as I said in the intro, there is another harness um, that you do need to buy if you have a 2014 to 2017, which I think is on the old, um, old infotainment system. So with the new infotainment systems, you just need the included um, harness. So the other thing that I will do a little differently is if you read these instructions, it will actually tell you to take off your seat as well as your gas tank. Um, and because essentially what um, Harley Davidson suggests is that you run this harness underneath your tank and then to the, I think it's to the right side um, side cover. Um, I'll show you, but I actually did not do that on my um, Street Glide Special. I actually just run this harness and coil it up and then run it along the right side, um, along the neck uh, where the uh, steering mechanisms are. Um, it saves you time on this installation and it works just fine. Um, and this is really the, the cable with which you need to do any firmware updates on this, which you will actually do, uh, check the firmware on this before you um, have the dealer flash this to make sure everything's up to date and also make sure your firmware is up to date on your, actually on your wireless headset. So first step in this process is to remove your fairing. So on the Road Glide, it's just really these four windshield screws, which just takes a, uh, a Phillips screwdriver. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those out um, and then we'll move on to the rest of the fairing. My Phillips screwdriver, I'm just gonna pop the windshield off as the first step of removing the fairing off a road glide. 
I'm not gonna bore you with this, but essentially it's just these four screws here, 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 and here. Um, and in my case, I actually have the Memphis Shades 5.5 uh, .5 spoiler um, windshield on, so I can't just slip the windshield off, but we need to remove all of these screws anyway. So let me get this uh, done and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I've got the windshield off. The next step is we need to pop this vent off. And as you can see, it just clips in. That reveals the infotainment system once I pop that vent um, housing off of there. And then we do need to go ahead and disconnect these turn signals. It's just, you just push them in with your thumb and, and pop them out like that. Um, and that will allow this whole fairing to then come off. If you've gotten the windshield off and this, this vent housing off, you need to pop these speaker grills out. And I think the best, these are just popped in here. Um, and so that you don't scratch this, you can just kind of push these from the inside out. Be careful not to break the clips, but just kind of pop those out and then that reveals the speakers. Um, and then this, I believe it's a Torx bit right here. So I was mistaken, this is actually a, uh, a 530 sec seconds hex nut here. Um, so I just got my 530 seconds bit here um, to loosen up this side. And just a little tip here, before you take all of these bolts out of this fairing, I will put in these screws um, on either side of this fairing up at the top. Two of them just to make sure that this fairing doesn't fall out um, when everything is loose. Okay, so now we're down here by the, uh, the turn signal. So I do need to remove this bolt and this is actually a 530 seconds hex head. So we'll just take that one off. As you can see, that fairing gets loose. And once we get this out, I'll remove the other side um, because this turn signal housing is actually connected through the inside of this outer fairing. So the last four bolts we need to remove before we can actually take the fairing off again are on these little wind deflectors. There's um, two on either side, and these are actually a T25. So I'll go ahead and get those out on both sides, and then we should be ready to pop this fairing off. I've gotten all the bolts out, so I'm gonna remove these sort of safety bolts or screws that I put back in that hold the windshield in to hold this fairing, and then just make sure to hold this before you release the last screw. And that should then release this fairing from the bike and then just make sure you set this on a nice soft pad so you don't get it uh, scratched up while you're working on the uh, installing the module. All right, so before we can actually begin to install the module into under the fairing here, I do need to remove this headlight assembly. So there's basically a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt here, and a bolt here. And that will release this complete housing to come out. Um, so I think that should do it and also took off these side uh, panels that were holding the the headlight in as well so let me get the headlight off and then we should be reveal where this module actually goes up underneath the uh, the fairing here i've gotten the headlight assembly out um, i obviously i needed to disconnect the headlight from here um, this is the the harness that connects into the headlight um, these two as you can see they have these little plugs were plugged into um, right here we're plugged in right here and then right down here on this headlight assembly so I just pop those out and then now I've revealed everything under here that we can actually then begin to install the module and the cable that needs to connect now we have everything open so we can actually slide this wind module in so there's a bracket right here with the two holes uh, noted A and B so this part of the bracket will actually screw into the hole slotted B. So you kind of got to just open these wires up and slide this in. There's a little lip that that gets on and then it should line up and it does. And then we just have the, uh, the supplied screw that was in the kit and we'll just screw that in. And again, that was a 5.30 seconds. So
gone ahead and connected this to the, the gray connector that was underneath the headlight assembly. I've slipped the cable up under and I'm connecting it into the WIM module. And there you heard it click. And then I disconnected this um, just to give me a little bit more room. So reconnect that. WIM module all connected. Now I just need to route this USB uh, cable that you update the firmware with back through. There's, there's this sort of center opening you'll see. There's a, a bunch of cables. The main wiring cables run through here. So I'm just gonna fish this through there and then it'll come out the other side and I'll show you where I connect um, this on the side of the bike rather than running it under the tank to save you a little bit of time. I fish through the fairing and what I do is I just connect it to um, some of this cabling that runs along right up to the tank. And essentially you don't really have to get to this cable very often other than just to update some firmware which you'll do kind of right out of the gate when you first get this installed. Um, but it's zip tied here, it's safe, it's weatherproof. It's not an issue. Um, typically what they want you to do is actually put this uh, back under your right side uh, cover and that means you have to remove this tank, run all that cabling up underneath your tank, and then back to that right side cover. So I've done this on the street glide. Um, it's a bit of a time saver. And then I just coiled up that cable and then just push it up into the fairing. It's not interfering with anything. And uh, to me, this is just a, an easier solution. It's gonna save you some time of removing the tank and the seat and then putting everything back together once you get it. So I just zip tied this. I'll uh, obviously clip the zip tie once I get, uh, get this all buttoned up. Got the headlight assembly reassembled uh, in here um, with the, the again the four screws. Um, these little side covers have got those screwed back in. So um, I've got everything pretty much buttoned up now. So I'm just going to go ahead. It's basically the reverse the process of when we uninstalled everything. Just kind of put it back in. The only thing to be careful of is you know you do have some excess cable from this new WIM module that you put in there. Just make sure you kind of got it stuffed. I got it stuffed up underneath kind of exactly where the wind module is so it's out of the way so it doesn't get pinched by any of the headlight uh, assembly here. Um, we popped on this again would be for if you had a CV module um, you would actually connect that in here. Um, I don't have that um, and then underneath here is that gray connector where the actual wind module itself um, connected into the infotainment system um, and the wind module is actually again underneath here so now I'm going to go ahead and put the fairing back on. Um, that was quite a process. I've never taken the fairing off of a road glide before. It's a little more complicated than the street glide. Um, so we'll go ahead and get that put back on. And then the last step before you actually take this to the dealer um, to get your infotainment system flash, which you cannot do, that's the only thing you can't do yourself, is I do need to upgrade the firmware on the WIM module. And I'll show you how to do that. You just need your laptop. Um, I think there's a, an app that you download onto your, um, actually onto your PC and then use the connector that you use to charge your wireless headset, connect into that little plug that we put on the right side of the bike and then we'll update the firmware on that. So let me get this fairing back on and I'll show you that. So now we need to update the firmware. Uh, the latest version on the WIM, I've just connected USB port into the port that's on the side of the bike. Uh, so we'll download the latest version. Save it. WIM already exists, do you want to replace it? No. Okay, so now we're going to update. And apparently it didn't have the latest and greatest updated version of the software even though I just purchased this so we are updating and you do need to have the bike turned off and the whim off at this point so for this to recognize the whim I made the mistake just before this to actually having the uh, the bike actually on firmware was updated successfully. So now, essentially, from my perspective, what I can do to the WIM is complete now. So that'll wrap it up, guys. We've got the WIM installed, we've routed the wiring, we've updated the firmware. The only thing that I need to do is I need to take it into Gateway Harley Davidson and have them flash my infotainment system so that it under recognizes the WIM. And then I have to connect my wireless headset, my 30K that I have, 
um, updated and basically just like pairing your phone um, to the headset. You, I think you hold the one button in on the back for like two seconds, it'll say phone pairing. And then you scroll through the menu on your infotainment system, you select it and you get them paired. And then from there on, um, it acts just like a wired headset. You can control the infotainment system through the headset. Everything will come through the headset. You then just have to connect your phone to the infotainment system and everything is there. Um, your music, um, you know, all the different capabilities, navigation, all that sort of thing. So, you know, it's um, not difficult. I would say give yourself at least an hour. I think if you took it to the dealership, um, they would probably charge you two hours labor to do this would be my guess. I'm not sure. They pretty generally have a standard sort of time for that. Um, to do it, so you know, you're saying if you install this yourself, you're going to save anywhere from 220 to maybe 250 dollars in labor. Um, it's not difficult. There's not much you can mess up. You know, just a little, a few simple tools, and you can do it yourself in your garage. Um, if you guys do like this, please give it a thumbs up. Um, also, I would ask that you please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, or if you're not already a subscriber. If you are, I thank you for the support. Um, and we'll wrap it up here. Life is short. Get out and ride the bike. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you on the next one. Bye now.